video is all about weeding. It's how to make it most enjoyable, how to make it easier, and how to make it quite good for your body as well. So first of all, why do we weed? Well, I remember experiments maybe 20, 30 years ago, and they had trees, trees planted in mown grass, trees planted in long grass, and trees planted in bare earth. These were quite small trees. And surprisingly enough, the trees that were in the bare earth grew 70% faster than the other two trees with grass growing around their base. And this is because the weeds, or the grass in this case, takes the moisture from the roots, it takes the light and the food. So therefore, if you actually have a tree, you want to make sure you don't have any competition. And it's the same for all sorts of plants. You don't want competition from weeds. Um, and bear in mind that some plants that are actually surrounded by weeds will just peg it. They won't get enough moisture and they'll die. And the other reason, of course, is you want to grow the plants you like. You don't want to grow a load of dead nettles, nettles, groundsel, unless, of course, you like them. And it is very personal. So what is a weed? Well, a weed is basically anything you don't want growing in that position. So here, because I started these borders from new at the back end of this year and this year, and I'm just growing tiny little plants from cuttings and things, I actually picked up forget-me-nots from around the garden that had self-seeded, and I transplanted them in here. And I've got some nice forget-me-nots growing behind me here, and they look fine. Now, in four or five years, when the roses have grown up and everything else that I like has grown up, I'll probably weed them out. So it's a flexible item, a weed, but basically it's something you don't want growing in that position. How do you make weeding most enjoyable? Well, weeding is amazing exercise. You might not believe it, but if I was to spend an hour weeding, I would be burning up 230 calories. Now, if I went to the gym for three hours and I hit the cross train, hit the cycling machine and hit the running machine, I would probably use something like seven, eight hundred calories for an hour. So therefore, if I weed for three hours, I'm making burning the same amount of calories than if I was in the gym for an hour. So it's very good exercise and it's a little bit more productive than being in the gym in a way. But you want to make sure that you look after your body when you weed, because you might go out in spring, the garden might be full of weeds, and so you spend the whole day with your bottom up in the air. And that position, which is like this, which is a little bit like downward facing dog in yoga, um, is actually quite stressful on your back. So if you are going to do that position, make sure you don't do it for too long. Now, I actually quite like that position, but I do engage my core muscles and, um, and I really quite like it, but I don't do it for long periods. And if you are weeding for several hours on the trot, I think it's really good to vary your position. And one position that I really like, and that's just kneeling down, um, and it's just so comfortable, unless of course you've got dodgy knees, and then it wouldn't be. And that is a really good, easy position. And again, you can engage your core muscles, have a nicely positioned back, and you can spend hours, I find, in that position, and it's really good. Um, a another position is squatting. Now, squatting is really good for your glutes and your muscles and your body generally. So if you can do a bit of squatting, and you'll find if you do some squatting, that obviously the more you do it, the um, easier it becomes and it, it will be a much nicer position to be in. So use positions, vary positions, and do it so enjoyable. And when you are down with the plants at ground level, you really get to notice your plants in intimate detail. You get to see what's doing well and what's not. And so the whole experience, I think, is, is quite nice. And what is the best thing to wear when you're weeding? Well, I love my trousers. These are made by Genus, um, and I like them because they've got built-in knee pads. You see, I could go down on my knees, and they're really, really comfy. Um, they're also waterproof and they're also lined. And I've got a summer pair and a winter pair, and they have actually revolutionized my winter gardening because if you keep dry 
from top to bottom it is so much more pleasant but it they don't make you sweat they let you breathe as well so i think these are fabulous trousers i can have my secateurs in one pocket my mobile phone in the other and i've got a belt um, and i just put them on over leggings so when i go in for lunch or whatever i can just slip my trousers off outside without scaring anybody and then i leave the mud and everything outside i also love gloves these are wonderful gloves i'm able to use my hands they're not waterproof but they're nice and flexible there are quite a few brands like this um, but these um, are by niwaki um, and all the branding and things worn off them they're that old and they've been that well used but they're still in really good nick and i just put them in the washing machine every so often and i love them so then the next thing a gauntlet so if i'm if I'm actually weeding nettles and creeping thistles and really tall weeds, I'll wear these gauntlets, long sleeves, and I'll often go out when it's been raining and you can just pull the nettles out of, say, my wildflower meadow if I want to, and I don't get stung. So these are also good in your armory. As for tools, I like a trowel. Now this is um, a trowel which somebody sent to me and it's got this funny handle. I think it's for arthritic wrists, which fortunately I don't have, but I do find it a really good trowel. It's very comfortable and it's got a nice long trowelly bit so you can get nice deep dandelion roots out and things like that. Um, so I, I like these very much. But having said that, I was weeding in a client's garden the other day and all they had was this weeny little trowel with a, um, a bit, a trowelly bit, just the size of a tablespoon. And I thought that'll be useless, it's so tiny, but actually it was really effective. You could really dig down and get them out. So just find something that suits you. A Dutch hoe is what a lot of people use. So a Dutch hoe is a hoe with a shaft that is in the same angle as the handle. Um, if you have a draw hoe, this bit would be more at right angles to the handle, and that's for pulling out drills when you're sowing lettuce and carrots and things. Um, and this one, you're meant to keep quite sharp, and you just take it through just below the surface of the soil, just to pick out any weeds um, that are on the surface. Um, and I, a lot of people swear by them. I hardly ever use it except sometimes on the gravel in the drive when it's been raining and lots of weeds have come up through it because my beds are so full of plants that I just don't have that much bare earth and so if I did use this I'd be taking out a lot of plants as well but it is very quick if you have got bare earth then I would recommend a draw hoe I think they are good for that some people um, use flame guns I have done in the past and you can get little ones and little canisters but they don't really kill perennial weeds, they only do the top and it's just something I haven't really got into so I tend not to use that. So I would say the trowel is really my best one of all. So what do you do with the weeds once you've weeded them out of the soil? So it does depend what they are. So in my bucket here I've got a sort of various annual weeds like chickweed and things like these. These aren't flowering yet. So I will just put them on the compost heap and I'll let them break down. Um, now, if they have got seeds, so this one, well, this, this is rather droopy. I planted it up to show you because I haven't got many of these, but this is bittercress. And this is one of my least favorite weeds. And this comes in on garden center plants. So when you buy a plant, you might not see this in the top, but often you've got seed seeds of it in the top of the plant. It's a real problem on nurseries. And so what I do to avoid those seeds coming into the garden is I tend to tape up, scrape off the top bit of compost on the plant I've just bought and put that in a bucket. Um, and then you will put hopefully a load of weed seeds in that. But this is an annual, but it is so successful and it goes up to flower and seed very fast. It's bittercress. And um, I tend to feed this to the chickens, which they quite like, or I put it in another bucket, not with the annual weeds, but with the perennial weeds usually, and then I put it in a big barrel of water. And those weeds will rot down for a couple of years or so before I put them um, anywhere else where they might get in the way with their seeds. And things like groundsel, if it's, if it's going up to flower or shows any sign of it, and you lift it out of the soil, 10 to 1, it will go on to flower and set seed even without its roots in the soil. So ground salt will also go in the big water barrel. 
cooch, nettles, anything with a perennial root will also go into that water bowl and they'll live there for two or three years and it's useful to have two or three so you can put the, leave the ones that you've just put in there for another two years before you start and then you can start a new barrel. So do be careful with weeds because they will otherwise just stay on the soil and germinate afresh. But the chickens are a great source for many weeds, they really like them actually. Um, now this weed here is sticky chickweed. Now I didn't know what this was and I started a new bed in the courtyard and there were loads of tiny weed seedlings coming up and I didn't know what it was. So I potted it up, put it in the greenhouse just to speed it on so I could identify it because you never know, it might be a lovely plant, um, not necessarily a nasty weed, but it is just sticky chickweed. So uh, now I know I'll rip it out and I'll shove it in the water barrel because it's got buds and flowers and I bet you it'll come back to bite me if I don't. Now it's useful to know how weeds proliferate and something like groundsel, it will set seed and, um, and then you'll take all the seedlings out and then two or three weeks later, there'll be another crop of groundsel. So it, it's designed to seed over, to germinate over a long period. So that means that it's unlikely to be wiped out and it's very clever. So you have to keep your eye on the ball. You have to watch your borders and just see if any seedlings are coming up and get them. And some weeds are much easier to get rid of than others. Bittercress is difficult, groundsel, can be difficult, things like nettles can be difficult. So know your weed and then learn the best way to get rid of them. These are strategies to really help improve your weed population in the garden, i.e. to reduce it. So in my mother's day, she used to dig over the borders in the autumn and the winter. And that was the thing to do in those days. And you have this freshly turned soil during the winter months, which looks lovely and fresh but it's really counterproductive because when you dig over soil, you will bring other weed seeds that were further down in the soil back to the surface. They will get the light and they'll probably germinate in the spring or when the, when the soil warms up. Um, also, when you dig the soil, if you've got perennial weeds in there like cooch, ground elder and bindweed, you're actually chopping the roots up. And so you're propagating them. So you're making your perennial weed burden even worse. And thirdly, and probably most importantly, when you dig the soil, you're reducing the earthworm population and also the soil microorganisms. So in the top surface of soil, maybe the top six millimetres, something like that, it'll be teeming, hopefully, with beneficial microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, things like that, that really make the soil healthy. And when you disturb that top layer, you're reducing the populations. So digging the soil is counterproductive. On the other hand, if you want to improve the weed population, make it less for you, then if you mulch it, it really helps. So I've got here some ray meal, and this is what I'm using this year. I just use whatever is cheap and handy. And this is basically shreddings of young wood. So it's, it's bark or trees or branches that have got a diameter of 70 mil or less and the leaves and the shoots and it's all chopped up and made into this really nice mulch. I leave it for three months and then I spread it on the borders and I spread it about 50 mil thick, something like that. And how a mulch works is A, it stops the light getting to weed seeds, so it helps stops the annual weeds germinating. It increases the earthworm population by something like 50% in two years or something if you could a good layer of mulch on the top. Um, and it also increases the aeration of the soil and the microorganism content. So mulch is brilliant. Now I haven't mulched much of the beds behind me, even though they're new borders, because I'm sowing a lot of annual seeds in here as well. And so they, that would get in the way. But come the autumn, I will. And you always mulch when it's damp. You don't want to mulch when it's dry or you won't. The rain will fall on the mulch when it's dry. The mulch will soak it up and it will stop the water getting through to the soil below. So always mulch when the soil is nice and damp. Now, some people say add farmyard manure to soil, but I find this appalling. I find that it just brings in weeds. Invariably with farmyard manure, even if it's well rotted, you will be bringing in bindweed, cooch grass and all sorts of things. 
Um, and even, I think, even cattle dung actually has weed seeds in it when they've been grazing. Because somewhere around, I put an old glove. And it was interesting because I found this glove. Here it is. I found this glove in the field. And I was out in the field and I was pulling up for any weeds or something. And I took off my glove for some reason and I put it down. And one of the cows came up and ate it. And I thought, oh my God, it's going to kill the cow. It didn't. But it's interesting to see, it's sort of pretty much gone straight through the cow. I think it probably chewed off that, the remains of that finger or thumb or whatever when it went through the gut. But I think weed seeds would be the same. I think if it ate a load of creeping thistle seeds or cooch seeds, it would go through the gut, come out in the compost, you'll put it on the garden and it would come up and bite you in the back. So I don't like using farmyard manure um, really on, as a mulch, but many people swear by it, but I don't. When I'm starting a new border, I always kill off all the perennial and annual weeds. Now here I killed the moth with glyphosate because I had a mass of comfrey and ivy. I could have used carpet, I could have used cardboard, but that would have taken two, three years. But with glyphosate it was much quicker um, and it's got rid of those. But then I just let it fallow for a bit until I planted it. And I will always do that. I think the worst thing you can do is to plant a new border. You're all excited. You want to get on and do it. But 10 to 1, your soil, if it's good, will have lots of annual weeds. It might well have perennial weeds. And so you put your treasures amongst these weeds that are hidden below the surface. They come up and they submerge your plant. And it's really, it's really disparaging when you're weeding a border with loads of weeds in it surrounding your lovely new plant. So just be patient. Have a fallow period, watch and see what comes up, get rid of them. And if you want to know how to kill perennial weeds, see my video on how to kill perennial weeds. And then when your soil is much cleaner, then you can get excited and get going and get planting. Really, my top tip for weeding is the lovely Chinese proverb, which is the shadow of the gardener is the best fertilizer. Now that means basically that if you're around in your garden and you're watching and observing, you're catching things at an early stage. So if I'm walking through here and I see lots of groundsel weeds coming up or speedwell, I notice them when there's not a massive population, I deal with it. I'll also perhaps notice that something needs a bit of water, a new plant needs a good soak. And that is really the same for if it to be a good gardener, you need to observe, you need to watch what's there regularly all the time. And I think that will make you have the best garden possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this video um, it, it, and I hope it's helped you. I hope it's shown you how to have a better body, how to enjoy weeding and how to find it relaxing rather than firefighting and being on the back foot the whole time. <laughs>